Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Dungeons of Doria, which is a dungeon crawling heroic kind of game, which will be at Essen 2023, and uh, I'm going to be showing off a little bit of it. We're going to have two heroes here just to show off a couple of things, and Little Glass Marty's going to help me out. We're going to be starting out with the Quick Start Guide, which is a, a bit of a scripted introduction, and then you play the rest of the scenario yourself. We're heroes, there's a little bit of magic in the air, there are creatures and demons threatening to overthrow the kingdom, and they tend to hide out in dungeons. The game comes with a ton of stuff, loads and loads of cards for loot monsters. You can play it in single scenarios. There are many different campaigns that come with it if you don't want to like randomly generate something. Whole book full of room events. And even those campaigns, the dungeons themselves will be randomly generated. So we've got a bit of a preset thing to start us off here. I am the warrior, Mulligan. The characters have cards that define their initial statistics, you know, strength, constitution, agility, all of that stuff. And then your HP is determined by the average of these two, initiative points, the average of these two, psi points, your kind of magical abilities, the average of these two. Then you might have modifiers on your items. So the warrior had to start with the combat hammer and the try a non hammer but you also got four random loot cards and from those you could divide them up between you so the warrior actually only ended up with three of them a wooden helmet some wooden greaves and a healing potion marty is going to be taking the role of our huntress o'hare who has some hunting boots and a hunting bow that she started with but happened to draw a better bow a fire arrow bow there are requirements on the weapons you need to have certain stats to be able to equip these things so the initiative board up here lists all of the phases of a round. First of all, we move the round marker along to the next space. This is just counting the rounds for us. Some scenarios that might be important. We deal three new items from loot decks. There are three enormous loot decks that I've just taken off camera so we've got space for all of the dungeon and stuff. But there are like, I think it's 510 loot cards across three enormous decks. There's loads. So these would be available for purchase this round. Then we roll for initiative. Every player rolls two dice. Everyone has their own dice as well. So I'm the blue player and Marty's the green player. They are all D10s, so it's not vital. But, you know, just know who rolled what. We roll for initiative and add our current IP value. The quick start guide is going to just define this starting value, telling us that we rolled a 5 and a 6. So 11 plus the IP of 8 gives us 19. So the warrior's marker goes on 19. And the huntress actually ended up with 25 IP. And we enter our dungeon in initiative order. So the person with the lowest initiative goes on space one. And for bird's eye purposes, I'll show you the standees, but you can see their bases, can't you? Where they're going to be sitting. I would lie them down, but we're going to cover up the whole dungeon doing that. And then we have the action phase, which is pretty much where everything takes place. The initiative we've ended up here are our action points. And we keep going until everyone's exhausted their action points and all the monsters have activated in this round. Whoever has the most action points gets to do the next action. So that's going to be the Huntress with 25. And whatever you want to do is going to spend those action points. So the Huntress wants to go over to this loot marker and pick this up. It's one, two, three, four, five spaces away, no diagonals. It's an action point to move each space. So she is going to spend five action points to go and grab that loot. And it gets taken away straight away from your action points. When you're on a loot marker, you can search for some treasure. You can draw one loot card for one action point, or you can draw two loot cards if you spend five. The loot deck is full of traps as well as you know, very exciting treasure. So it might be wiser to spend the action points to draw a couple and pick one. So I think then the Huntress is going to spend five action points. So I'll knock her down to 15 and draw two loot cards and see what she gets. Oh, there's the option of another potion here. A Psy potion to give her more Psy points. She has got kind of a full belt at the moment. So things would have to go in a backpack. It's a lot of action points to get things out of your backpack. She's got this Holy Water Balester, a projectile weapon that does loads of damage, but you need 11 constitution and 12 perception. She's just short of that, so she couldn't equip that. Neither could Mulligan. So she probably wants to get the side potion. She's kind of full up and Mulligan's got space. So what you can do is yeah, we're in the same room. We're moving about. You can throw things to the other characters. So our warrior now has the highest initiative and he is going to explore for us. You know, one, two, three, four, and then can declare to open the door. So it's not an action, it doesn't cost action points, but it stops whatever action you were doing. That loot marker should be gone now. It's been explored. So we have a stack of room tiles here. Uh, these are usually you know, randomly generated, but for the purposes of our quick start, it's been defined what is going to be here. The order that everything's in as well. So we reveal a new tile. This new tile only has one door, so we have got to connect it so that the doors line up. Not that it would make any sense, would it? 
And we also flip the round marker to show that a door has been explored this round. And most rooms have got little monster icons in different colors. The colors correspond to player counts because we're only two heroes. We're only going to be using these white spaces and we can fill any loot icon spaces with loot. We would normally draw a monster card to see who comes here, but the quick start is going to start us off with some zombies. And there they are. We're just going to pop them on their spaces and we want to get in range. So the warrior is going to move one two spaces into the room because his combat hammer here has a range of which is two the hunter wants to be in range six and allies don't block line of sight you've just got to be able to draw a line from any square that you're in to any square that they're in let's just move her in just in case she wants to be able to attack both i, th I think she could probably hit both from there actually she spent another couple as well let's have the warrior attack first so the warrior's weapon has an action point cost on it to attack. It's very pricey to swing this enormous hammer, but it can also do some great damage. It costs 16 action points to wield, and the warrior only has 13. You can always attack, even if you can't quite afford it, so it's kind of in your interest to mill about a bit uh, before you go and do it. It does spend all of your action points, though, so it's the last thing he's going to get to do. And then we're going to roll combat dice. So the hammer tells us that we're going to roll two dice plus three. If we have a look at the zombie as well, their defense is two dice. And we're hoping to roll higher than them. They've only got one hit point, so it should be possible. Let's see what we roll. Now, zeros are tens and they always explode. So they can enable some really high results. So it would roll again. But I do get plus three, so that's 18 to 17. I just about make it. My successful hammer attack does two damage. The zombie has one health and is defeated. We get an XP for defeating a zombie. And the player who defeated it gets to draw a loot card. But unfortunately, our warrior has stumbled into a trap. A chainstorm trap, to be specific. You accidentally touch a hidden switch and activate a magic lightning trap. The chain lightning automatically jumps over from every affected character to any other character within three spaces, strikes as many characters as possible. To avoid this trap, each victim makes a check on perception plus wisdom plus two dice. We need to get 28 plus three times the monster level, which at the moment is just one. So 31 we need. So let's see what we can get. Two dice going to be 10 plus perception 19 plus wisdom 24 it's not 31 but we do have some armor armor has this helmet symbol on it it can protect against damage from traps so we can use our try and on armor here which will protect against four as long as it's not vulnerable to the element in question so this armor would be vulnerable to water. This isn't water. So we can protect four of that five damage. You can only use one bit of armor at a time, but we have to show that it's temporarily damaged. We can't use this again to defend against a trap until we've done this. The armor still works for other stuff. It's just for defending against traps in particular, it's used up for this round. So just one damage taken by Mulligan there. And then O'Hare also needs to roll, has better perception and wisdom. So let's see how she does. <gasps> so she has got 16. 10s get re-rolled and get added on. 25, 36, 43. There we go. Absolutely fine. Okay, so the Huntress manages to dodge out of the way of the lightning and has an action. The zombies come in with three action points. They're hopefully not going to get to act if we can defeat this one in time. So the Huntress's fire arrow bow costs 15 action points. At range six, we can optionally spend a psi point so it will do two damage instead of one. As the zombies have only got one health, I don't think there's any point doing that. It is going to cost all of our action points again. And the zombies get their dice as well. So we have got, oh, actually three dice plus three. So we should hopefully make this. So that's going to be 11, 14, 17. We defeat the zombie, get an XP and draw a loot which is a spell, Sling Stones. Magic attack that accelerates stones or other small items to hit the target. It's going to have to go in the backpack, unfortunately, for now. You can use things from your belt. So maybe it would have made sense to leave a space in my belt, actually. As long as it only uses one hand, you can use things straight from your belt. So we can't equip it because our weapons are both two-handed, great big things. So the zombies have been defeated. Not even going to get to act. So then we have the poison phase. This only happens, of course, if a character is poisoned. Special actions, if any characters or the scenario told us special things would happen. Then we have doom counter. So our doom counter is going to move along its track. 
and you can see spaces where it can cause monsters to have extra activations and stuff and they can level up so it goes up a space for every room occupied by any number of characters so you know it might have been an idea to move in here as well so the doom would only move up one space but the hunter stayed back for safety so it goes forward two spaces and now we flip back to the normal side ready for next round if no room had been opened this round the doom counter would have moved an extra space then we level up as soon as you have reached xp equal to the number of characters you can level up the cost is increased if you play in a campaign but it costs an xp each and we can increase one of our attributes this might mean you can now equip things that previously you couldn't or make your stats go up now you round down so i don't think there's any way we can help mulligan we probably want health more than anything he's going to be our big strong tank let's increase his strength to 14 doesn't change any of his stats just yet but next level up it would and if we get something that wanted a load of strength he could now equip it and i think it's going to be agility for o'hare whose character sheet is in a very awkward position for a left-handed person on this table hey i managed it so then we have the three shop cards we revealed at the start they've got a gold cost and all of our cards have got a gold cost at the bottom as well. If we want any of those cards from the shop, we can discard cards to that value and have them instead if we wanted to swap some things over. You can pool together so that one person can afford an item. And traps can end up in the shop as well. They have to be bought to get rid of them, otherwise they're just going to take up one of the slots. So we didn't buy anything, so these get cleared away because they're not traps. And we go to the next round. So the round marker goes up. New shop items come out from each of the stacks. That Katani, you need a lot of agility for it, though. Mulligan's quite far away from having that. He's got nine. Yeah, so these would be decent on the Huntress. And the Huntress has got five psychics. She's quite away from being able to cast that spell. Yeah, probably not anything for us in the shop this round. Roll for our initiative. So Mulligan gets, oh, not a lot. Four plus nine is going to give him 13 action points. And we can also, as the rounds go on, we unlock bonuses on our characters and give us extra damage, extra hit points, things like that. And O'Hare is going to get 12 plus 10, 22. So a bit less than last time, but hopefully we can still get some stuff done. So we want to go and get some stuff discovered, don't we? We could try and go for some loot. I think, yeah, the Huntress will go one, two, three, four, five, six to go and get that loot. And then five to draw two cards and keep one. Now let's have a look. Oh, she could have a two-handed sword, which she could give over to Mulligan. Actually, oh, he's got he has got 14 strength. That's just what he's gone up to, but he's only got nine agility. So again, he's a long way from being able to wield swords and things. Strength nine, psychic seven. That far away from that, a psychic arrow rather than uh, a real one. Uh, yeah, it could, could go in the backpack, couldn't it? It's something that could be spent. Like it's worth a couple of money, so worth taking. I think either of the rooms are just as far away from each other, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, because it's his turn next. And then we will reveal a room from the stack. Again, it's just got one door on it. On our white space here is going to be a gargoyle. It's a magic being with stone claws. Only one HP. It's going to have 10 action points. Winged creatures magically crafted from stone. Their heavy skin protects them well, but even though they look heavy, they are extremely fast. They've got flights. They can fly and do not have to jump over holes or obstacles, and they move normally on red bordered squares that we haven't really seen yet. There's some fearsome attack, and they've got some pretty decent defense actually as well. So it's hopefully going to get to act. So we can see that it's got the black border so we can give it 10 action points because that's what it's called told us so it's going to get to go before the warrior so the huntress is just in front but it's going to cost one two three just to be able to see the gargoyle and then when we put her action points down it's the gargoyle's turn to act no one is adjacent to it so it's going to move to be adjacent to the nearest hero because it hasn't got range the gargoyle is going to move right up to our hero it's only going to get to attack once in a round, but they get to move and attack as one great big action. So you can defend with your items as well if they've got a defense on there. So Mulligan can try to parry with his combat hammer. He gets two dice plus two on that. The gargoyle's attack is going to be two dice plus four. So the gargoyle is going to be hitting for 11 plus four, 15. And so Mulligan's going to need to beat that. Oh, gets a 10. So that's good. So we're at 12, 20. Two, Mulligan successfully parries that. So we don't have to worry about the monster anymore. It's time for the Huntress. She is going to try to attack, so it's going to be three dice plus three. And she... Oh, 
a little help from the player board there, but she did roll his head, so she is at uh, 21 right now. 22 plus 3, so 25. And this might really help out, because if you can beat the number that you need by loads, it will really work in your favour. So 25 versus 9, 13. Now, every 10 points that you have exceeded your target by is a critical hit and does an extra damage. So we're at 25 versus 13. That's 10 more than necessary. So we know that this would cost 12 action points and let's spend the side points for it to do two damage anyway. So that's three damage in total. And that's important because the gargoyle has got armor. Unless you're using lightning damage, and you can ignore its armor. So we're doing two damage to this gargoyle. It's only got one health. So amazing work from the Huntress there. Helped by the crit and the fire arrow bow that she happened to draw. So the gargoyle is defeated. That's an XP and a loot, which could be a trap. It's a short sword. It actually does a little bit more damage and defense than Mulligan's uh, combat hammer. And it's only one-handed, so he could have uh, two different things if he equipped this. 3D plus 2 instead of 2D plus 3. And it only costs 13 points to activate. Oh, he has got to, he's got to be closer to, uh, but he needs 11 strength and 10 agility. Yeah, why not? She could throw that over. He's one agility off. If he chooses agility next time, does mean his HP is not going to go off, but he could equip that short sword and maybe find something else to have. Okay, so we've still got seven action points. Yeah, Mulligan could go one, two, three. He hasn't got enough, though, to draw two and keep one so he's just gonna have to accept whatever this is and it's going to be oh three projectiles it goes to it's, it's far too difficult for us to do anything with at the moment but good to have with a couple of coins and so we're just going to end the round there no poison no special actions the doom counter the downside is we're, we're in two rooms again so we need to move this two spaces and it's going to cross the plus one extra activation space this means that all monsters would now get to activate again so we're going to spawn the usual way now we draw a monster card to see what is going to come out to greet us it's a skeleton so the skeleton appears and gets to attack straight away and the skeleton has got a few different stats here so undead has a long sword it's gonna get to act on eight deceased warriors wrapped up in metal armor brought back to life thin bones they are entirely immune to any ranged weapons and can only be wounded with melee weapons or magic attacks so it's going to be attacking with three dice and it's actually got two health rather than the usual one so it's attacking with three dice gets 11 no modifier to that and O'Hare can defend with the fire arrow bow, try and shoot the longsword back. Uh, so 2d plus 3, but her feathered hat actually adds 3 to her defense, so it's 2d plus 6 to defend with. Oh, gets a 10, so that's good. So 18, 21, 24, 27, successfully parries the skeleton away. Or just whacks him over the head with the fire arrow bow. And is distracted by her cool feathered hat. Oh, I should have turned that over when we explored a new room. I've done it now. So we can't level up just yet. We're not going to buy any of those, I don't think. Might be worth, you know, spells are what you can use to defend yourself against magic attacks. So at the moment, nobody's got anything equipped. Yeah, the sling stones can't be equipped. So yeah, it's a really hard spell. No, it's not worth taking anything. Does... Yeah, we're too far away from the stats of any of those items, so we'll reveal new ones next time. And that's it for this round. So the round marker moves. We need some new shop items. Well, the piercer here, that's piercing damage. So it would ignore armor on things in the future. But you've got to spend the side point for that. But that's something to have. And it's only one agility off that. Could team that up with the short sword. Something to think about. Okay, roll for initiative. Mulligan is going to have 15 plus 8, 23. And O'Hare is getting, oh dear, 14. Not so many this time. He has got reach on his weapon though, which is a, a plus. So he's going to come over 1, 2, 3. An attack, so it's 16 points he still has. So he could do two attacks actually, potentially. He's got so many points here. So it's his standard 2d plus 3. Let's bring the skeleton in. So he gets 15, 18. The skeleton's defending with three dice. And we're hoping for low. 17, so only just, but manages to do one damage to it. Then it's the Huntress. Just attack, why not? Oh, actually, it can't, she, she can't damage it, can she? Ranged can't damage it. Well, she wants to walk away then. Does she reveal the other room so we don't get the kind of doom counter advancing again? 
Or do we just accept that happening this round? She just gets away so she isn't attacked. Because she's got a lot of movement points to spend. Okay, let's let's open the new room. That's three action points spent. So she would potentially get to attack something. And we found something special here for, for space reasons. I'm just going to take that other room off screen. It still exists. It's just above there. Look, we have found a double length room. So this room has only got half of it. So you need to draw so you can see the rest of it. And here's the final portion. So we've got some treasure lurking, but a lot of monsters to contend with here. Hopefully she can see something within range six. Okay, here's just going to be a zombie. We've seen them. So that zombie's blue. It goes at initiative three. Over here we have got, oh, a monster modifier. Draw an additional monster card. The next monster is assigned this modifier, target's head. This monster always aims for the head. If the attack is successful, the damage is subtracted from both the hit points and the side points. Only armor from the head may be used. Okay, that's going to team up with, oh, a gargoyle. A gargoyle that targets the head. Suddenly, doesn't seem like too smart a move, does it? Then we've got an archer going at nine. A lot of enemies here all lined up. And then we've got fire creature. So it's a modifier. This monster is a fire creature that inflicts fire damage in addition to its normal damage. So we might be weak against that. And it's another zombie. Okay, so a few of those going on. Now, these are just like level one. They go up to level four enemies. As, you know, they level up as the things go on like we do. Okay, so <laughs> the warrior is probably thinking, what have you done that for? So from where she is, she can shoot through the door and get the zombie that's here. Just the, the non-fire one. So she'll use her... Oh, it's three dice, isn't it? 3D plus three. And it's only got one health, so no need to do the extra damage. Oh, wow. Two crits. This is what we need for a gargoyle. So that's 25. Well, surely this is no problem. 28, 33. Zombies defend with two. Could get tens. Versus eight. So yeah, that's doing like two extra damage anyway from crits, isn't it? That zombie's done for. Get an XP. But that is all of her action points spent. So now the gargoyle is going to get to act. Needs to get next to someone. Can it do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it can. So attacking with its stone claws, 2d plus four. That's going to be 14. And then defense, 2d plus three. Oh dear. Oh, that's 13. <gasps> 14 to 13. So close. So does two damage, unless you're weak to that. Well, you can't you can't use that kind of defense. So you can only use head armor to reduce this down. So you can use a feathered hat to reduce that damage by one. He's got eight health left. So he spent the archer goes next. Let's have a look at him. Green skin, fire arrows. The goblins have armed themselves with short bows and shoot flaming arrows at anyone unable to dodge quick enough. It's got aim shot. It ignores the nearest target if there is a target with less agility within range. Its range is six, just like the huntress is. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to have to move one, two, three, four there. Still has action points left though and can attack just like we can. So it's going to be 2d plus four, getting eight, 12. And then 2d plus 3. Oh dear. Versus 7. It's fire damage, so we can't use the felt trousers or the boots. So it's just going to have to be the weaker armor of the feathered hat. So 2 damage reduced by 1. Still taking 1. Has 7 health left. Then this skeleton gets to go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can still just about attack. And so the skeleton has 3 dice. Oh. I oh, should have kept that. It was a one. Oh, it's this skeleton as well. Oh, it's the zombie. It's the zombie. Two, 2d plus two. Oh, that was a really low roll as well. Never mind. So it's the fire creature. It does fire damage in addition to poison. Oh, dear. For every successful attack involving damage not blocked by armor. Armor will block this. Phew, that's a, re that's a relief. The target receives three poison markers. So can't use fire. Oh, dear. 19, 23, 25. Okay, needs some crits. No, 10. So he's actually doing two damage. Can reduce that by one, but that means she is going to get the poison markers. So three poison markers. So we're going to have to check that in the poison phase. Then it's time for our warrior who can do an attack. I think had better do that. So that's, yeah, that's, that's everybody done then, isn't it? So the warrior is going to attack the skeleton that we were dealing with already. He's the only person that can attack that skeleton. So he's got 2d plus three. And let's have a look. Three. Maybe they won't defend. 
so that's six altogether versus three dice. Come on, ones. It's, it, luckily, it wasn't a double one, but yeah, defends that entirely. So we've had the actions. Poison, you need to do a constitution plus wisdom plus two dice test, and your target is 28 plus two times the monster level. So monster level still one for now. We did open a door at least, but I don't know if that was a good idea. So that's going to be 30 is the target number. So constitution 11, wisdom is 18 plus these dice. So we're looking for 12 or better here. And we get, oh, 16. So it's that 34. So she gets to get rid of one of her poison markers. If she, for every crit that she could have got with this roll, she would have gotten it rid of additional markers. And then you lose hit points equal to the poison you've got left. So that's going to be two more. She's got four health. Poison, no special actions. Oh, special actions on the zombies, actually. Each zombie creates an additional zombie in direction of the characters. Every zombie unable to will get activated. So a zombie spawns. We can level up. So Mulgan can go for 10 agility here. Oh, his armor would have been fixed by now. Sell some stuff to get the piercer. And now he'll be able to spend four AP and equip stuff from his belt next time. Oh, he's going to up her sigh to try and increase these stats probably gonna use the healing potion actually not gonna get any more things so they can go away no traps found in the shop just yet done all of that so round marker goes to four we need to flip it back new shop items what have we got lightning spell again a bit hard for us we're not so magicy. rock punch spell and a soul staff a great shop round for a wizard but unfortunately that's not us roll for initiative Mulligan gets 13 plus his 8, 21. And O'Hare gets, oh, 16, 17. Oh, I thought that was going to be amazing then. Uh, 27, though, isn't bad. And then we've got the skeleton on 8, the gargoyle on 10. The zombies are going to be acting on 3. And the archer back here on 9. Right, let's see if we can defeat these. So the huntress, she might as well try and attack the gargoyle. So yeah, spend a side point. You can go like, you see this big range here, you can go into negative hit points and they affect the action points that you'll get. It starts reducing those instead. If you ever get around where you get zero action points, you're out. So yeah, let's attack the gargoyle. Can't afford to be the one just being hit all the time. She could try and attack twice anyway. So that's gonna be five. And then she will attack the gargoyle. So it's 3d plus three getting what have we got 15 23 and we'll pay yeah we've paid the side points and we'll pay the 15 and she got to spend it before the attack probably would have last time if i'd remember but she didn't remember or spend it uh, so 2d plus 4 on the gargoyle and that's going to be 15 versus 23 so it gets through no critting but we don't need to because oh she should have lost a side point actually for the attack shouldn't she so yeah it's got an armor but it's two damage so we kill it it's worth an extra XP because of that target's head. So we've got two XP there. Could make it worth extra money instead or as well. So that's defeated. We get a loot, which is a wizard staff. It's worth two gold though. All worth some good stuff. The warrior is going to attack the skeleton again. So it's going to be... Actually, he'll use his four AP to put his other things out. So use this short sword instead, which is three dice plus two instead of two dice plus three. So attacking with the short sword, because he doesn't need the piercing damage on the skeleton, does he? He just needs to do damage, he hasn't got armor. So 21, 23 versus 17. So it gets through. That's the skeleton defeated. If we can just get them all. And Mulligan hasn't really taken any damage just yet. We've got these flaming spawning zombies, though. That are probably going to be a problem. So that was 13 action points to activate that. Oh, this should have advanced, shouldn't it? We were in one room because extra activations. We're not going to be opening doors anymore. So yeah, stuff to think about. I don't know if we can move and attack people now. We've not many spaces, certainly. So next, the gargoyle's dead. The archer has got nine points. If gets there, he's six spaces away and can attack O'Hare again. They've got the same agility. So I think, yeah, we'll, we'll attack O'Hare. So that's going to be 2d plus 4. So gets 11. And defending, we have 2d plus 3. 9, 12, only just. So that's him done. You're dead. And it's time for the Huntress again. So she can see the Archer, can't she? Can she see the zombie? Can just about see this one. The other one might spawn something, though. So what's he got? Four action points. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get to anybody to attack. Could try and take out one zombie, though. Let's try and take out the, the fire zombie, the scarier one. So 3D plus 3, 17 versus 2D, 10. That zombie's taken out. 
one more XP and another loot. A flaming sword. 11 strength, 12 agility. Bit of a way off for Mulligan. Yeah, I could chuck that to Mulligan. Slips right into his belt. Or probably wants to use the healing potion. It's a mega healing potion too. One die plus six HP. 10, 16 HP. Her max is nine though. So perhaps a bit of a waste. And she does have a side potion as well if she wants to get that back up. So that would be all of her action points. The warrior, I suppose just valiantly step in, start getting close. One, two, three, four, isn't gonna have the action points to attack. The zombie is gonna be at, it doesn't mean the zombie will get to attack though. And you might get poisoned. So probably don't wanna do that. One, two, three. Yeah, can't quite get at anyone with one range. So that's the round there. Poison. So two dice. If we got, oh, seven, that's not good. 18, 25, that's not enough to reduce the poison at all. So it loses two more health. Special, a zombie respawns, but it's not a fire creature anymore. I wish we've got an extra loot for it being a fire creature. Uh, so Gladius, a uh, one-handed sword. Might be worth, you know, we could switch to it next time you know, a skeleton comes that you can't melee attack, that you can't ranged attack. It's probably good for her to have something. Doom counter. We're in one room, but no door was opened because that's it. So extra activation for all of the enemies. Oh dear, they're going to get to go anyway. So the archer is going to attack they're all going to attack Mulligan, I think. So the Archer, two dice plus four. That's going to be seven, eleven. And then two dice plus three to try and parry this arrow. So that's seven, ten, just out. So just two damage. That's okay, we've got some good health. Then the zombies. This zombie's going to come out. 2D plus two. Oh dear, 16, 18, 19. Versus... 12, 15, not too far ahead, but yeah, that's going to be a damage, isn't it? And three poison. Uh-oh. And this zombie, one, two, three, can get in there. So 2D plus two, 14, 16, versus eight, eight. Oh no, we're going to have to heal back up in a minute. It's only one damage, but the poison in a few rounds is just going to really, really ruin everything. That was the doom counter. Level up, we can level up again. I think if Mulligan does his constitution to 14, his HP will change to 14, because it's the average of the two. So he'll gain one HP there. O'Hare's gonna keep up with the Psy, which is gonna give her an extra Psy point now. Buy the shop items, no, we don't want those. So a new round, new shop items, spell spell, oh, okay. Maybe I shuffled these badly, there was like 500 cards. Well, like, you know, yeah, there's, there's 500 cards, there's a lot of spells in there. If we had a wizard, we'd be laughing, wouldn't we? Roll for initiative. So Mulligan is getting 13, 21. O'Hare's getting, oh, 19, 29. And roll the turn again. 36. Okay, here we go. And then we've got the archer is going to be on nine and the zombies are going to be on three. Go on, Huntress. On the zombies. Here we go. Three dice on zombie first it's going to be 9 15 18 versus their defense of 13 defeated that was 15 action points to do We've got 21 left so we're tied i think we'll have the warrior go next because he's right next to the zombie anyway so it's three dice plus two that's gonna be 16 18 versus 18 oh dear 27 so failed to hit there that's 13 ap gone the huntress is going to shoot the archer because the archer will get to go next so it's still only got one health it does two damage it's only got one health so yeah fire arrow bow she doesn't need to do her extra damage so we've got there 7 10 20 21 you'd keep going if you kept rolling tens as well 21 versus Five, seven. So a crit, don't need the crit, but still nice to get, isn't it? There's an XP. The loot is a Psy Explosion spell. And the archer's gone. It's only the zombie left in it. What was that? Uh, 15 action points again. She's down to six. He's gone, so we can go again. The warrior goes. I don't know why I've rolled these. Because uh, he needs three dice as well, but he's rolled the black ones. Eight, 14. And can't even add up. Versus the zombie, who's now going to be rolling blue. Oh dear, 17. Oh, this, uh, this hardy zombie. So that's it. This round, can the Huntress take this zombie out? It's tough. The, the warrior is just... His short sword is just pinging against his uh, rotting flesh. So it's three dice plus three from the bow. 
So we're on there, 9, 16, 19 versus 8. There we go. At last, as poison threatens to kill us, I think we would manage to escape there and make it out of our starting dungeon. So you can do randomly generated things that would be kind of like this. It's easier to level up and stock up on things. You can play ongoing campaigns, of which there are a lot, but I've given you like a flavour of some of the enemies that are available, some of the items you might encounter, a couple of the hero classes out of the many that you can play as, and giving you a little taste of Dungeons of Doria. Thank you so much for watching this. There are hundreds more playthroughs on the channel if you'd like to see more from me. It's available at Essence Beal 2023. I'll put a link to the Board Game Geek page in the description so you can check out more. There are ways to support the channel in the description as well. If you fancy joining up on Patreon, it helps the channel to exist and you get to see videos early and stuff. Join the Discord. Thank you so much for watching though and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.